What's happening? This is Never Done, and welcome back to another episode of the BFB Podcast. Today, we have a return guest. This man has since then gained a couple of thousand subscribers, has worked with some of the best VGM music artists and producers, as well as creating his own lo-fi album. Please welcome Studio Nintendo. You've been working, man. You've been working, man. It's like, and since like your last visit, you know, on the BFP podcast, a lot has happened. So you, I would actually want to touch in on that at the, the breaking point when you kind of like blew up and that's when signs of love came out and yes, you blew up with that. That was from the persona Four OST. Can you describe that experience of that moment for you? Well, I, first I got to say with the, shout out. Well, that moment wouldn't happen without, uh, Alex McCullough, um, on YouTube. Um, shout out to Alex. Um, he stumbled upon that video on Reddit and basically said, yo, this is dope. And he shared it to, you know, a bunch of it's shared on Twitter, basically like, yo, people check this out. This is an underrated song. Check it out. And like, you know, and people flock to it after that. And it still gets, it still gets views, man. And that experience was it's, it was humbling to say the least, man. Because like at that point in time, because I think we had done we done the interview. Um, that was like November 2020, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And we did our interview earlier in the year. I told you I had all these plans, playing all these games, <laughs> you know. And uh, I think at that point, honestly, because because of what happened in 2020, I just got COVID in September. I was coming off COVID. I was tired, worn out end of the year because you know we, we're all dealing with the pandemic we're all dealing with this bro I, and i put out signs of love and at first the video just didn't it didn't hit well and i remember i think i dm'd you or i talked to somebody i said bro i, I might i might quit i might be done after this because like it just at that point i was just tired man you know going through 2020 and everything with the pandemic and working hard and going to work and then you're putting all this effort into making the song video and nothing like nothing pops. And then when Alex found it and shared it, that basically gave me new life, like new, a new breath to like keep doing. It Cause like somebody noticed it, you know? And yeah, it was just, it was a humbling experience for all that to happen at one time. And it was very encouraging. And, you know, off of that, the channel grew, made new friends, met a lot of new people off of that. And that's really another thing you know, at that time was, you know, we were transitioning out of one community into our own respective communities at that time. You know, we were both doing the, the gaming topics and the gaming community and live streams, late night live streams, playing Smash Bros, all that stuff. We were transitioning out of that. Mm-hmm. And I think if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have met a lot of people, you know, that I'm friends with still to this day, Husky by the Geek, uh, G soon from the Limit Breakers. Like, it, like I kind of, kind of met a lot of people in that community and it kind of helped me stay stay the stay the path basically um so yeah man it's just it's just a humbling experience man to say at least like most people i don't know if most people would get like big-headed about it but for me 100 percent humbling to know that people actually liked it and people you know dug what i was doing at that time especially like i said in, in the season that i was in especially it was 100 percent humbling gotcha and it's like I remember when you when you um you was uh you was going off. I I, I text you about it. Yo, bro, did you did you know Alex tweeted your, your stuff? <laughs> I remember that. Well, no, because no, this is what this is what happened. Because I put the video out. I went to work. So at my job, I have no cell phone service. Like I can only I can relate. Like, text people, like or maybe get a phone call in. I have no data no data whatsoever so every once in a while you'll get notifications to your phone for the data that does leak into the building for your phone and i was like man what is happening because my phone just kept like like i was getting much notifications and i was like i remember texting i was like bro can you please like see what's going on with my channel because i go all of a sudden i'm getting all these notifications i don't know what's going on like i'm sitting around at work just you know working hard upset because the video wasn't doing well <laughs> you know what i mean like i was upset and then all of a sudden i, I texted you i was like bro like what is going on can you check for me and i even texted my wife too i was like can you please like check for me because i don't know what's happening right now 
and then you were like, bro, Alex Kala sent people to your channel to watch this video, and I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> no way. And, you know, it was crazy. And uh, I told Courtney, Courtney said something, she's like, she's like, yeah, she's like, all of a sudden you're getting a bunch of views, and she went to Twitter, and she saw the tweet. She was like, this guy tweeted out your video, and I was like, that's Alex Mukala, like, what? <laughs> you know, that whole thing. So, yeah, man, it, it turned everything around. And, like, I immediately, I remember when it happened, I immediately was like, yo, I had to, because the way it works at work, I have to, like, call somebody to give me a break. I was like, yo, I need a break right now. I need to go to the bathroom, you know. I just went to the bathroom where I had service, and I started looking and seeing, and I immediately, like, retweeted and said thank you. And then I, he followed me, which is cl- even more clutch, and then I DM'd him and said, bro, Thank you so much for sharing the video. Like, you didn't have to do that. I know, like, me, me being a small channel, I really appreciated that. And I told him, I'm like, bro, you got a supporter and you got a friend for life with me. Like, because, that, and that's usually how I get down, right? Like, if, if, if somebody really, like, if somebody really, like, you can tell somebody who genuinely likes what I do or, like, genuinely reaches out, like, like I'm loyal in that sense, right? So, like, I just DM said, bro, you got a friend. You got a supporter in me 100% all the time, no matter what you do. I really appreciate it. And ever since then, you know, we we, we still are in contact. We still DM every once in a while. If I need advice, he gives it to me. Um, and it's, it's, it's been great. That's good, man. That's good. So I wanted to ask, it's like this exposure has really opened you up to like new collaborations and such. And I wanted to ask, like, what were some of your favorite collaborations since this time period from November 2020 till now? Favorites, favorite or the best? There's, there's two different. Whoo! You, you go, you, you, you go, we go in there. We go like the best rapper uh, well, alive well, conversation. Well, like, well, no, because like, because like, some of the best collaborations I did with Husky by the Geek, uh, Gametal, especially the Final Fantasy uh, 14 anime one that they did recently last year, right before the holidays. I think in November, mm-hmm. um, they had this crazy idea to put together a Final Fantasy 14 anime opening for the new DLC that was coming out and they asked me to sing on it. And that one was probably one of the best well put together projects I've been a part of. Like they were on their stuff, Alex and Husky and and Denmo who did the video editing and everything and Magitech productions. They like, they were on it. So like, I didn't really answer like the DMS very much, but like their conversations was just like, okay, we're doing this, we're doing that demo. would send this in. And then they like, it was like real legit, like production, Okay, at point seven seconds, this is gonna happen. This animation happened, so the vi- so the song blah, blah blah. Like it was like this ridiculously good put together production, like DM group on Discord, just detailing every everything, everything. And then demo would send us videos, and Husky would be like, oh, it's dope. And the Husky kind of changes change the arrangement a little bit, and uh, I just sat back and watch them work you know what i mean i like because i didn't have much input because i was just i was just the vocalist like so i was like whatever they arranged i sang so most part i was just like with watching suggestions seeing everything happening going back and forth it was it was pretty it was pretty awesome um it was a pretty awesome thing so that's probably the best collaboration that i've been a part of okay um favorite that one's hard that one's hard, man, because um, probably the ones with Husky, but I have one coming up that I feel like might become my favorite. Oh. Um, and I have two coming up, actually, that I feel like might become my favorites. Um, and I- I'm waiting to see. I'm waiting to get their video edits in because they are some of my favorites. One was... Um, for Black History Month, I decided to do a cover of the song My Curse by Kill Switch Engage. Um, for people who don't know who Kill Switch Engage is, they are a metal band from Boston, I think, but that's not really a detail you need to know. Um, <laughs> they're, they're, they're a metal band. Um, and at the time that I discovered them, they had a black lead singer. And oh. at that time, for me, being a kid where I grew up in and, and being like one of the only black kids in like metal and hardcore and punk rock music that really hit for me. 
like seeing a black guy out here just rip it and sing it and this metal music and being really, really good. Um, his name was Howard Jones, and he was just awesome. And so for Black History Month, I'm I'm putting that putting that cover out. Um, and I have a bunch of other um, black artists that did the collaboration with me. Um, so we have four, wow. four, so a total of four black artists on there. Me, uh, <laughs> my buddy, Tra- my buddy, Trey Watson, uh, my buddy, Haunter 64 and my buddy, Frozen Fury. Um, all four of us, um, uh, doing different parts. And this is probably my, going to be my favorite. One. I, I think it's probably going to be my favorite one just because of what it means to me and black history month and all bl- being all black artists, which you don't see in metal music very much. You, you know don't. what I mean? And so, it's that one's probably gonna be my favorite if I'm being honest. Um, just because of like the, the what's the word I'm looking for? The uh, <laughs> representation, <laughs> representation, and just the, like what it, what it means to me, basically. So that's probably gonna be my favorite one coming out. But that's just that's just because of preference and what it means to me. But um, over the past years, man, the Husky collabs and the House collabs have been great. Oh, and the Gametal one was good. Um, we did a Reach for the Stars. From Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic Colors, I think, was the game, and we did that one. I really like the, one I like the Limit Breaker ones you did too. Ugh. Limit Breaker ones I did, yes. Um, and I don't, we got more of those coming out too, um, which is another thing. Like for so we did a Escape Escape from the City with the Limit Breakers, and then now um, I think I get to say this because it was a, it's a Game Grooves collaboration. I think I can sort of announce it here without getting in trouble. Um, can you? Can you 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 went out so off the air? Well, they already tweeted it, so okay. they already tweeted that the album's coming out. So again, Grooves has a, gets a bunch of BGM artists to do, uh, you know, compilations of covers. And the theme was Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic Adventure. Ooh. Um, and we did, me and the Limit Breakers did Live and Learn and uh, Pumpkin Hill Zone. Okay. For those two. Um, okay. And so. Excited for those. Uh, we'll have videos out for that soon. After the album releases, we'll get the videos out. It's just one of those things where we can't put it out until the actual album comes out. So that's that's what I'm looking forward to as well. Um, so be on the lookout for those. <laughs> I shall be. First of all, I really like the um, the Black History World collaboration because <clears throat> excuse me because representation matters, and it's like. I can imagine it's like for you growing up, it's like you growing up seeing, you know, one black artist, one bleak, one black lead singer on a metal band growing up. It's like you're passing the torch down for right. more people to see that growing up. And YouTube, YouTube is the new radio. Like back then, radio and CDs was what was how we heard music. But now YouTube and Spotify is how we hear music mm-hmm. now. So yeah. for you, you're doing the same thing, but even to a greater degree. So you can inspire more people. So that's that's right. pretty that's pretty awesome. I really I really yeah. like hearing that. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's my hope. My hope is that it really people see what I'm trying to do there, you know, and be open to the idea of what we're trying to do. That's Absolutely. Really the most important part. Absolutely, absolutely. But um, and this kind of goes into what I want to talk about next because it's like you're someone who creates both original music and you reimagine covers. Like you don't just do covers; you reimagine them, which I highly respect because it's one thing to do a cover to a song, but to reimagine it into something that people wouldn't necessarily hear. It's kind of something a music producer would do, and I honestly respect that. Mm-hmm. And you do this while maintaining a full job and a family, so. <laughs> I'm kind of curious, like how how do you balance it to all of this? Well, <laughs> um, I'm very fortunate, very very fortunate to have a very understanding wife mm. um, who supports what I do and and understands that th- this is time consuming, um, but she she gets it. You know what I mean? Like she one hundred percent. So, first off, shout out to my wife, uh, Courtney. We'll, we'll go with that because it, it is one hundred percent. If she she she's behind it, she gets it. So if I'm working, she's like, "Hey, kids, dad's working on something. You know, can you be quiet? Uh, kids, dad's working on something. Can you leave him alone for a minute? You know, and stuff like that." Um, so first off, that I have to give my wife all the credit for that. And then second, 
Um, you know, it does get hard to balance because, you know, I, I discussed this on um, Mikel, Mikel Casanova's podcast that I did, you know, last year, late last year with him, that 2021 was a, was a year of, was a year of relaxation for me. Um, 2020, like, like I mentioned, you know, we talked about that. We, we went hard in the paint. We didn't, we mean you were, you, well, you weren't off work so much, but I was off work <laughs> and, you know, so I was constantly putting out videos and constantly working, 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 working. Like I said, Final Fantasy VII Remake came out that year. We were both playing that game. I was so inspired. I put out a 17-song album for that. There's a lot of work that goes into that, a lot of time spent going into that. Then I started playing Persona 5 after that. Then I put out an EP. And once again, while playing a 100-hour game and putting together an EP, that takes a lot of work. And then, not to mention the various other covers that I did throughout the year, um, it's a bunch of Xenoblade Chronicles too. Because I you remember that yeah. I started working on that Xenoblade Chronicles two album too that hasn't came out yet, but I'm slowly getting those out. But that started in 2020. Like a lot of stuff started in 2020, and that was a lot of work, a lot of brain power, a lot of just grind, 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 hours, hours, hours. That by the time I got to the middle of 2021 i was kind of beat you know what i'm saying and so yeah i really slowed down the uploads in 2021 because i'm not gonna say i'm not gonna say it was a i was burnt out but it was a legitimate like hey man you're you're really pushing yourself not that i'm out of ideas but like you're kind of just you got to calm down a little bit and that was where the lo-fi album idea came out like it was like okay you're doing all this hard music hard music hard music heavy do something fun not to say that me making videos wasn't fun but it was like yo do something fun and i remember we talked and i was like yo man you should do um you were like yo what i tell you i said you should uh start doing video game uh remixes again and you should do Zelda song. And you were like, no, you should do it. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, maybe I shouldn't do it. <laughs> and that's that's where that came from. And so I um, I, I started it. And that's where Lofa, and that was just a fun thing for me to do, too. That was well well put together, too. And, and that's how I got through. And so not to say that, you know, having a full-time job and having a family while doing content creation is very, very challenging. 100% challenging. I'm not going to say it's easy, even though I could quote unquote, make it look easy. It's, it's not because there's a lot of time and hours spent doing this. A lot of time you got to make sacrifices. I'll put it this way. Um, and not sacrifices in the sense of you just ignore your family. No, but sacrifices as in maybe you don't get to go out of the house as much. Maybe you don't get to go hang out with your friends as much um, because, hey, after I do this, let me go watch a movie with my wife and kids or let me play Mario Kart with my kids or, you know, whatever. Like there, there's some sacrifices you have to make. You can't really have it all when you're kind of doing this, you know, and until you get to a certain point where you're able to do it all. But, you know, when you're working a full time job, it takes a lot of sacrifices as far as like maybe you won't get to go hang out with your friends at the restaurant or they're going to said concert you want to go yeah i do but i gotta get this done so no i'm not gonna go you know what i mean like absolutely there's certain sacrifices you gotta make so it's not it's not easy i'll tell you that and it requires a lot of sacrifices and a lot of time and an understanding wife and an understanding family and everything so like i said you know if it wasn't for my wife being behind it i don't don't think i could do it so that's the first and foremost important thing <laughs> Okay. Life, man. See, shout out to Courtney. And um I I'm glad it's like you you found that balance because it's like as you know, as yourself, it's like twenty twenty one was really twenty twenty was a year I started slowing down. And twenty twenty one it's like I'm like, yo, I'm about to get back on my music grind and start making albums again. And then towards the end of twenty twenty one, I just shut it all down. Didn't. 
right. I just shut it all down. And it's, it's, you got to get to a place you have to understand yourself. You have to understand that you're only one person and you can't spread yourself too thin. We only have 24 hours in a day. And it's like, right. how are you going to piece out each of these hours, each of the time, each time of the day? And like you said, it comes with that with sacrifice. And sometimes the sacrifice is some of the things that I like doing before. I may not be able to do because it may not be palatable for me to do these things in order for me to accelerate to the next phase of my life. Mm-hmm. And I wanted just to ask, it's like with all this, it's like life comes with le- these comes with lessons as we continue to do content creation. Like we live, we learn, we know what works, we know what doesn't work. What is one lesson you learned in your content creation journey that you'd have loved to know before you started? Mm, one lesson that I've learned that I would have would have loved to know before you started. That's just t- that's a tough question. It really, that's a real tough question. Um, I could go through many lessons that I've learned. Choose creating content. Um, I'll say choose one. Choose the top three. Go for it, man. Well, I'm trying to think because like we gotta go through like the whole journey of me creating content started with not music. It started with gaming and. Um, yep, it started with it started with Nick, the Nick Fury channel with those, and then it went to uh, Nintendo Di- Nintendo Direct, Direct, then Studio Nintendo, Direct, Studio Nintendo. So, which I kind of prepared myself. I at least I thought I prepared myself, mm-hmm. right? When you do these things, when you first start making content, you're like, man, I really, I I thought I did prepare myself. I watched certain creators i watched uh certain peers of mine do it and i was like okay i'm I'm learning how to do it improve uh first things first we get a webcam that way we can do that uh capture card all that stuff learn how to edit all that stuff um so like the lesson the lesson that you you all everybody always tells you when you're creating content is like at this point (laughs) i'll say this the most important rule of creating content is do it for yourself. I'll start Mm. there. Do it for yourself. Make sure it's something that you believe in that you can be invested in. We'll start there. Um, Because this, you know, we talked about this going from gaming topics to gaming VGM music. Gaming topics wasn't something that I was like that invested in you know what i mean mm-hmm. i think i was invested in it because it was fun i like talking about games i love playing games um but i'll be honest for me i kind of felt like starting a gaming channel like that would have been a, a golden ticket to some other things if that makes sense yeah um and that wore thin on me um and that's why i switched it up because i wasn't able to do that anymore and uh, mm-hmm. but i still love gaming so how how could i do that and boom gaming and music and that's why i made the switch up so my first advice to somebody if i would have known would be make sure that it's something that you can invest in make sure it's something that you wholeheartedly can put yourself put your stuff into because if it's just something that you're chasing for views or just trying to make a living off making youtube videos and you and um this is your golden ticket. You'll one, you'll get burned out real quick. No matter how much better you are, no matter no matter no matter how much um, no matter how much you study to make your stuff look better. Or oh, I'm editing here. Here's my transitions. All this is dope. It doesn't matter how much effort you put into it. If it's not something you believe in wholeheartedly, you're going to you're going to fail. Um, and I don't mean like fail as in like you're not going to get views because you may get it, but you will wholeheartedly not be in it and it, it won't be fun anymore for you. You know what I mean? Um, and so once again, that's why we made that switch up. You know, I made that switch up to the other channel because it wasn't fun. This is fun to me. Like making editing videos is now fun to me. Now at making music is now fun to me. Uh, audio engineering is fun to me. I, I, I love doing it. I like doing it. Right. So just make sure it's something that you're hardly in. That's the first advice I would give. And then the second advice I'll give is quality over quantity. Um, and that's one thing, and 
the gaming topic um, sphere, and I'm not trying to bash anybody because there are a bunch of people that do it really well. But that's one reason. That's one thing in the gaming topic community because they're trying to get news out so fast, so fast, so fast, so fast, so fast. A lot of times people do sacrifice quality for quantity because there's, it's such a rollover of topics all the time, consistently, constantly. Um, that's not any shade towards the bigger YouTubers that do it that are really good, like Spawn Wave or RGT85 or Player Essence or, or anybody like that. That's they, Shout out to them. They, yeah, shout out to them. They do it well. But for somebody who has a full-time job like me, who sometimes it can be hard, and sometimes you do skate on quality for quantity. And so that would be another advice I give. Quality over quantity. That's that's the best advice I can give for for anybody who's wanting to start or for my for myself. If I if if I could go back to twenty when I start my YouTube channel twenty seventeen, if I could go back to twenty seventeen to my first self, I would say, hey, you don't need to start a gaming channel. You need to start a gaming cover channel. Go ahead and ironically start. <laughs> ironically. I'm not going to say it was more cost effective for me to start this channel, but ironically, like I would probably be a lot better and know a lot more and would be killing it way more if I would have started the gaming channel in 2017 instead of the gaming or the gaming music channel in 2017 than a gaming topic channel in 2017. Um, so if I go back in time, that's what I would tell myself. Like, one, make sure your whole heart's in it. Your heart's not going to be in it, so switch it up. And two, quality over quantity. And everything will work out. Yo, that's solid advice. And, and and I think, you know, anyone watching, that would definitely be helpful. But um, I actually wanted to pick your brain a little bit with quality versus quality over quantity. Do you believe that this should be a healthy relationship between the two instead of the two going against each other? As if one should make uh, a lot of good quality. So basically, because both if we if we're if we break it down, both are suggestive terms and they differ right, from people right, to right, people. Right, right. So right. should there be uh, more of a marriage between quality and quantity? Yeah. So yeah. So what I mean by quality or quantity is it's more of a that was a personal thing for me. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of times where I would have sac I would have sacrificed not doing something correct correctly because I hate that's once again it's subjective. Right. I would I would sacrifice doing something correctly uh, for the sake of just getting the video out, even with the gaming music channel or um, I, I just didn't know what I was doing. So I didn't take the time to actually look up the correct way to do it. And I just sort of would then just do it and then put it out. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think those those two can be married. And so what I mean by that is like. Don't sacrifice quality just to get the video out or to get the content out. Make sure it is done before you get it out. Mm. And once again, we're talking about subjective. Done is also a subjective term when it comes to music or anything like that. <laughs> because like <laughs> because you could nothing is truly done when it comes to the artistic side of music, mm. right? So what I mean by done is at the best of your ability at that time. Is your process all the way done? Okay. Because there's a lot of processes for me that have changed recently. Um, and my processes are always changing because you learn something new. You learn a new trick. You learn how to use a new compressor. You learn how to do this and that. You know what I mean? You learn how to... Th everything can change consistently when you're doing this. But what I mean by is it done? Is your process finished 100% fully the way you do it? Is it done before you put it out? Don't sacrifice that. That's what, and so that's what I mean by quality over quantity. And if you're good, and if your process is like bang, 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 and you can get videos out all the time, then sure, then then get them out. But never sacrifice that process and your quality just to get something out. Which comes back to what I said in the beginning: is stay true to yourself. And do what you and put you in it, into it. Like most people, if 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 um, like I said, going back, make sure it's something that you can wholeheartedly believe in and do. If you wholeheartedly believe it and do it, you're going to do it 100, percent and you're going to get your process done. And it all goes back to that. So, 
yeah, so yeah, you can marry the two, but when I say quality or quantity, it's just like don't sacrifice something just to get something out. Make sure it's done well. There's plenty of times wherever I've taken an extra week to get a video out because I didn't want to cut corners to get the video out. And that's okay. I know that everybody's caught up on the grind of YouTube and we gotta you gotta be consistent on YouTube and get your videos out. You gotta have daily uploads or weekly uploads or whatever. Sure, if you believe that and you believe that's the way it works, fine, go ahead. But don't don't sacrifice your process and quality for that. Get it done the right way first. I absolutely agree. It goes it goes into like to the eighty twenty rule or the Pareto's principle. It's like twenty percent of your efforts come from twenty gives you eighty percent of your results. So it's like make sure you focusing on giving good quality. Make sure you're, you're prioritizing the rightful task so you can give out the best product. So I definitely agree with you on that. And you mentioned the grind on YouTube. Like the grind of content creation is very real. There's no avoiding it. There's a yeah. there's a grind to to some level of degree. If you're trying to be successful, there is always going to be a grind. And it's so easy to lose yourself. I've been there. You know, you've been there at one point. A lot of us have been there to the point where it's easy to lose yourself in this grind of YouTube. My question is, how do you protect yourself from making this grind into an idol? There's a lot of there's a lot of things you can say on that. Um, mm. I, 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 had I, mean, to. I mean, the obvious answer, if we're getting to the spiritual realm of things and, and, you know, me and you both are proclaimed. Christians, we believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. So that, that we'll start there. Like, like, like if we're, if we're <laughs> exactly. going in the th- that portion of it, like you know, really, if you keep how to keep from being an idol is you have to basically be okay with that thing being taken away from you at any given moment. Um, if the Lord tells you to, the Lord tells you or takes it away from you, like if we're just gonna be real on that, how do you prevent things from being an idol? You got to be okay with that being gone. Yeah, you just you just have to be like you have to be okay with hey if this is if this was taken away from you or all of a sudden if YouTube just shut down took away all your videos are you fine with that? That's one way I think about it, right? If if let's go with let's go with video games for instance. If all of a sudden I something crazy happened somebody broke into your house stole my playstation 5 xbox switch gone would you be okay with that or would your first thought be i need to go get me a new xbox place you know what i mean so how do you keep things from being an idol you got to be centered on the gospel first thing we'll, we'll go there that's really the first part being centered in the gospel and knowing that your identity is not in this stuff your identity is in Lord above and in Jesus Christ. So we can start there. So how you prove me an idol? That's usually how I think about it. Like, and that's usually how I evaluate an idol for myself. Like, if this thing is gone, how do you react to it? How do you quote unquote survive without it? If that makes sense. And that's usually how I determine something can being an idol. Um, or just or being too much. And I'm gonna be real, at one point this YouTube both YouTube channels were were a big idol huge and it took a lot of 2021 like i said stop doing it and really looking at it being like you know what if this was gone would it be that big of a deal like would it be the worst thing in the world if i just stopped making videos and i really thought about it and i was like no it wouldn't be the worst thing like you'd be fine you still have a job you still have things to do you know and once again you know a lot of my quote-unquote idolism on the YouTube channel was just because I was trying to basically find a way from not having to work my full-time job now. Like I said, and once again, looking for that quote-unquote golden ticket for a way out, you know, and that was, that's definitely a wrong way of trying to go about it. Cause <clears throat> that got me in a lot of trouble. I'll be honest with you. There was yeah. a lot of, there was a lot of, um, I'm like my wife's texting me. What she say? Uh, there was a lot of. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I had to look at that real quick. No, you there good. was a lot of. Um, in 2018 specifically, there was a lot of things that happened to me 
financially to where I was in so much turmoil. I know you remember this. I know a mm. lot of people remember this. Where I was in so much tur- tur- turmoil, like, but a lot of it stemmed from sacrifices that I made for for the YouTube channel. You know, going in debt and buying things. Um, not going to work. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, not going to work because we got to stay here and cover the Nintendo Direct. Or not going to work because we got to stay here and, and watch E3. E3 was a big one, right? E3, we got to cover all the E3 live streaming topic, you know, because E3 is a big deal. Um, so, yeah, some, I shoot, it, yeah, it was a big idol for me. Um, once again, because I was not okay with my situation. <clears throat> I wasn't okay with any of my situation at work or, or whatever. You know what I mean? So I was looking for a way out of it. Oh, this YouTube will start YouTube channel and will blow up and we'll get a bunch of subscribers and then we'll get all this money and, you know, and then I don't have to work and I can work from home and be at home. And, you know, it became an idol. It became like a, a ticket to get out. So, um, yeah, man. So how do you, how do you, how do you prevent these things from being an idol? You, one being okay with it being gone. And that's, that's where I had to get to for the gaming channel, gave it up. So, so you know what? Don't need you anymore. And then I started, the music channel and then the music channel slowly became an, uh, an idol because i was like yo i'm really good at this i can make this happen let's make this a, a thing you know what i mean let's let's try to make this into a, this thing into a living we'll do this and that and then in 2021 once again like the grind of doing all that sort of halted that so and in a sense i did get it taken away because i wasn't as consistent i wasn't as consistent of uploading videos and i felt that and so now here we are in 2022. It's crazy as 2022 already, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Here we are in 2022. And yeah, if somebody was say, if, if YouTube was to take down my YouTube channel and take it away because of whatever legal reasons, I, w- I would be fine with that. That's awesome. That's really good to hear, man. I would be okay. I would be okay with that. You know what? Fine. Maybe I didn't have to keep making this music. But I, I'll tell you what, I, I won't stop making music because I've learned the process of producing and I, I absolutely love the process of engineering and producing music. So I, I wouldn't stop doing it. So, Yo, I like to say I really do appreciate the answer, but especially we said you have to be okay with it being gone. And that applies literally not just to YouTube, but pretty much anything in life. And it's like whether that be your career path, people, anything. And uh, that's kind of like why I got. That's pretty much why was we we text about this, you know, throughout. But that's pretty much why for the months of September and October, and most of November and practically all December, I was ghost. <laughs> I, no one saw me because I really realized this thing became an idol, and I desire to be okay even to the point where i deactivated my other twitter got rid of all of my follows and contacts and i'm like i desire to be okay with all of this gone and if i just start all the way over it's it's okay it is (laughs) it's okay excuse me it's okay so you know you basically get to a place where you have to be like you said you have to be okay with that being okay and once you it's like if you are in that place where you realize that you have made it an idol it's always a day where you could just turn around and say okay let's reroute like gps it like reroute Mm -hmm. (laughs) like you know instead of keep going straight down the path continue going down that path yo buck that left and make a u-turn if you need to and that's that's basically where you know, I've been at it myself and it's like, it's good to see, you know, in 2022, it's like towards the end of 2021, we begin of 2021, we would be up late at night, chilling yeah. on, chilling on like discord, doing home. Now towards the end of 20, begin of 2022, yo, we barely even got time to be on discord. Like we're on different journeys. And it's like, one thing we agreed on is like 2021 was the, the reset 2022 is the re-up. This is the the year where 
we start doing things more with intention. So yeah. I definitely appreciate, you know, your answer with that. And I want to leave off with one last question. And this is this is the one where I'm you, you have freedom to have so much fun with this. If money was not an issue, how would you spend your time? If money was not an issue, how would I spend my time? <laughs> um, I don't know, man. Like, because, like, like, for me, I'm not. I, I don't desire a lot. Like, I, I don't. I really don't desire like a whole lot of things. Mm-hmm. Um. So if money wasn't the issue, I mean, I would probably, I would move. That'd be the first thing. I'd probably move away, move to like Seattle or somewhere on the West Coast. That'd be the first thing I'd probably do. Forget Seahawks. Yep. <laughs> Gotta be there every Sunday. <laughs> talking about, speaking of idols, moving your whole family, uprooting your whole family to a city for, for a football season just from September to December, potentially January and February, like that's not an idol at all, right? <laughs> so let's start there. Um, but um, but just free time in general, like Amen. I don't I don't know how I'd spend it. I would probably spend it just like I would. I spent my entire free time for this last six weeks. I was off work, which was I worked on music. I get on Xbox or whatever, play some games, spend time with my wife. We, me and my wife, played a lot of Halo together. And a lot of games together. Um, I now have it in the office to where she has her own corner. She used to not have a, a, a spot to be, but now I have it to where, which her desk is messy. I wouldn't show you. I'm not going to show you because her desk is messy, but she's got, if you can see me right here, she's got an Xbox, PlayStation 4. She's got her own Switch over there. I see a GameCube. Like, Game, well, that's not hooked up. <laughs> Xbox, One X, Xbox One X, PlayStation 4 hooked up. And she's got a TV over here. She's got her own desk. Like, she's got her own spot. So, you know, she's when if I'm making music, she's she's usually over here playing video games at the same time. You know what I mean? Or if I'm playing Xbox, she's playing Xbox. Or if I'm playing PlayStation, she's playing PlayStation. So, I would probably spend my free time basically doing the same thing. It would just be playing it, doing it without the stress of hey. <laughs> You gotta go to work tomorrow, or hey, you gotta pay set bills. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so if money was an issue, I'd probably just be doing the same things. Um, I might do some few different things. I know she wants to go on a vacation, so that'd probably be the one thing I would do. All right, we can go on a family vacation wherever you want to go. We can go to the beach, but yeah, you sh- I'm not. I'm not. I don't desire a whole lot of things in my free time. I just like to be in my home for free time. Like I don't like to go a lot of places. Um, if I do go places, it's for a reason, like a concert or, you know, we're getting stuff or this and that. I don't desire to be like be out and about with the people. You know what I mean? Like, let's go to this I get place. It. To to I'm with you That's on just that. not really something that I really desire to do. I really like just being in my home and creating stuff. And when I'm not creating stuff, I like to unwind playing video games with my wife or, you know, whatever with my kids. And, and that's it. So I don't really desire a whole lot of things. Cool, so, cool. I know it's real. I know it's real boring, but no, not at all. That's just, that's just that's just me, man. Like I don't desire. Nah, man, that's valid. That it is a hundred percent valid to just desire your free time and to just spend it, you know, humbly, you know, with the people that you love and care about. It's because at the end of the day, it's like we only have twenty four hours in a day, so it's like, you know, this is the one resource you don't get back. So literally. Mm-hmm. What is worth that value to spend that time with? Who is worth that value to spend that time with? So I love the answer, man. But um, I know you got work. I got work too. I got I got clock back in, and I'm glad we was able to make this happen. Um, yep, yep. before we go, do you have uh, anything you want to say? Any last party words or anything you want to um say? Any f- future collaborations? And shout out your channel, man. Where can they find you? You can find. Studio Nintendo, everything, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, um, all those are there. Just 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 Google Studio Nintendo. Yeah, everybody. just Google Studio Nintendo, and you'll find me. You'll find videos, whatever. 
um starting to get back into the tiktok thing i haven't been making a whole lot of tiktoks because that's another grind that's just stupid but we're not gonna talk about that um but yeah find me there um in lasting words i I have some collabs coming out i gotta mention the black history month one i should have one video coming out this thursday which i don't know when this is coming out so today's the 24th it's coming out friday this so there will be a video there should be a video out the day before this comes out so go revert back to the channel after you get done watching this and go watch that video it'll be from a persona 3 song it's a collaboration with two friends of mine jisoon um, from the Limit Breakers and Lacey Johnson. She is a very talented BGM artist as well. Um, so that one's coming out. Can't wait for that. Hopefully, I got to shoot video uh, when I get off work tonight. I got to shoot my parts and then I got to edit it all. Once again, we talked about that. That takes time. So, but but it should be out Thursday. I should have more than enough time to get it out unless you know something happens or I fall asleep because work's been too crazy. Because um, it is my first week back to work in six or seven weeks so you know that's gonna be a shock to the body when you're just sitting here every day all day doing nothing and then now you got to go to work and stand up for eight hours a day <laughs> that's that's gonna be a shock to the body so um as they say pray for me y'all for that <laughs> tough. um but we yeah um i don't really have any like any crazy I'm, I'm not really this wise man giving you wise wisdom. I don't have any like wise lasting words. The only th- lasting words I say is, bro, like in life, treat people right. Treat people well. And that's all I got to say. Because especially in today's climate with everything happening, just treat people good. Just treat people good. That's a terrible word. Treat them good. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. I love it, man. Well, everyone... His information is down below. We want to thank you for joining us on this episode of the BFB podcast. And there will be more interviews coming up, uh, more talking head videos. And who you got next? You gonna really just do that? Next, you you got next. You just gonna do that? You just gonna do that? You just gonna do that to me? Who you got next is us all. You you just gonna do that? Do that to me right now? Who you got next? No, you let the people know. Who you got next? Who's next? Is Rob Rob coming back? Is Is Rob coming back? This dude put me on on blast on my show. Like literally, is Rob Rob coming back? It's in the uh, talks. I didn't get get in contact with him yet. I didn't get get in contact with him yet, man. Basically, what I was trying to tell you is he's not prepared. No, I'm joking. (laughs) Listen. The contacts, the we're doing season two a little bit differently, as you can see. Love it. You got I'm you, just glad you're doing it. I'm glad you're back, bro. I'm gonna be real. I take you know, I keep I hate to keep interrupting your promo, but <laughs> I'm just glad you're back doing it. Um oh. these for breakfast, the first ones were awesome. I really love those interviews that you did, especially the one with Rob, because I can relate to that. Like, so I'm glad you're back doing all this stuff. Oh, doing the beats for breakfast. Back to live streaming the beats. One hour. I respect the one hour. My man's out here is put himself. Look, listen to me. I'm proud of this man real quick because my man, like when he live streams. Okay, you don't understand. Like Abaddon used to be. He used to if he would live stream, he would live stream for hours, like just hours upon hours, just just streaming. And I'm out like an hour and a half. He is now disciplined <laughs> himself. Hour. That's it. There will be times where I'm like, oh, Avenue went live. Let me go do this real quick. I come back. It's already <laughs> over. <laughs> so like, so like, I'm I'm gonna shout out, shout out to Avenue. I'm proud of. I him. appreciate really, you, man. He's disciplined himself on that. He's back doing the beats for breakfast. Back to making the beats. I'm excited. So there you go. I appreciate that, man. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, hour, hour and a half at most. Because I like to have some Q and A. First of all. This man right here asked one of the best questions I've ever I have ever got asked on the live stream. I had, to, I had to make it into a whole video because well, <laughs> thank you because it's and that's what the Q and A is for. So if you all are following the Avedon Spiff channel every Friday or Saturday, depending on what how my schedule is like, we go live. We just chop it up. We make a beat and we chill out and we talk. So if that's something that you enjoy, you go follow that channel. But for now. Make sure you hit that like button, hit that, that, that subscribe button, and most of all, most of all, and most of all, you make sure you share this with a friend. This is Avadon and Studio Nintendo, and yeah, we that's me. That's me. are out. Peace.